And now, all things are going. All should be well, and all should be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Yes. Hello and welcome to Well There's Your Problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters. With slides, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. I am Alice Cordor Kelly. I'm the person who is talking now. My pronouns are she and her. And for a second consecutive week, nay, Liam? Uh, nay, Liam. Yeah, my name is uh, Liam Anderson. Uh, my pronouns <laughs> are he and him. You may recognize the voice of our, our, our co host, Liam Anderson, who has yes. not changed at all. Not, uh, not even no. slightly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I, I am Liam Anderson. I'm, yeah. I currently have a, a game on. Uh, yes. the, the Loch Haber Shinty Club is uh, is knocking out of the park right now, and uh, and I, yeah, uh, oh, uh, I have to make actionable threats. So, oh, uh, names. Think of a name. Uh, Elon Musk. Uh, oh, this. Is your, uh, I, I hope the, the. Oh, you'll definitely have to bleed this. I hope the next woman you sexually assault. <laughs> Get his ass! Oh, oh, that was fun. Let's do another one. Oh, uh, uh, no, uh, no, he's, he's, he's gone a mad with power. He's a shit bag. <laughs> Jacob Rees Mogg. Uh, fuck. Uh, I look forward to your crooked oily. <laughs> in your own anemic feces. <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's, it's it's very it's very relaxing, yeah. isn't it? It yeah. is. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the catharsis pod. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was good. That was really good. Why have I nose why have I got a nosebleed? <laughs> it's, that's the sort of the venom symbiote going yeah. on. Uh, it, it's it's in very good symbiosis with Liam, but no, not yet mm. with you. Oh my god, he's got a taste for blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've we of course got Gareth Dennis back. Uh, we yes. we sent we sent Liam to 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 go away and like watch a load of Shinty games and learn about railway permanent engineering, permanent way yes. engineering, and he came back as Gareth. Is um, that that can happen? Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so can... thank you so much for coming on and filling in. Uh, no, it's a pleasure. I always love coming and saying hi to you folks. It's uh, it's always fun to be on and talk about um, disasters and how we fuck things up. It's great. Yeah, we, we have we have one here, which seems yes. to be going poorly, I would say. I was, I was about to say, what you see on the screen in front of you is you see, here's the outline of one train car. Yeah. What you might notice is there's another train car uh, oh. up, up oh. here. Now, see, I thought that was just that one train car was taking some scrap metal with it, uh, in in the same way that you know you or I might take a, a picnic, kind of uh, cast into a little blanket and strung over a stick, yeah, a bindle, <laughs> yeah. Yes. But actually, this this appears to be uh, carnal relations between two uh, train cars. Mm. Oh, which is not show that. Um, can't yeah. show that on television. And put a black no. bar over this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about the 1988 Gare de Lyon accident. Oh yes, oh, yes. Crikey. But first, we have to do the goddamn news. I picked the most English photo I could find. Uh, so, so uh, <laughs> crossrail. I didn't see this. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this is this is the first train. Uh, so, so crossrail now renamed the Elizabeth Line, which is now uh, annoying all of the most themselves annoying people because it shows up on tube lines as Elizabeth Line when all of the tube lines don't have the word line in the name. Um, it it, it has oh, now that is annoying. Yeah, yeah, I'm intensely annoyed by that. Yeah, I'm one of those yeah. people. I will forget it. <laughs> you had two of those people on this podcast, Alex. <laughs> oh, it's shit, cross- I got a backpedal. It, yeah, it will always be crossrail to me. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, so this is... What's it so cross about? London. Uh, and and, and the, <laughs> e- the southeast of London. Well, um, there, there was the joke made by, uh, I think, Molly, or Molly Goodfellow on Twitter pointed out, why didn't they call it... Um, uh, rage fuck rather than cross rail. <laughs> <laughs> so Crossrail has opened. Uh, it's it's what fucking is Crossrail? How do you describe Crossrail? Uh, cross, okay, so Crossrail is a it's a it's a suburban. It's like an S train, uh, like S band type train system. It's more like RER than like a metro service. So it's massive trains, like twelve cars long, fifteen hundred passengers per train. Um, like really high spec. The stations are epic. They're amazing. They're cathedrals to railways. They're honestly fantastic. Um, 
And obviously, all the politicians today were going, oh, it runs, sorry, it runs east west through London. So there's like a central section with what, what is it, like seven or like some number of massive stations in the central section. Then it connects up, as these things often do, onto kind of former lines that are now crossrail bits of railway, uh, east and west, going out from Paddington wonder, uh, towards like westwards and then eastwards up to Shenfield and down to Abbey Wood. So lovely. Um, and it's purple. Great. Um, yeah. And because the trains are bad, uh, because the trains are high floored and their technology is rubbish, that accounts for the fact that it's not accessible uh, in most in most of the system, and also that it was this late. So hooray! Um, and also, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, all the politicians going like Boris Johnson, everyone going, oh yeah, transport investment is great. Look how fantastic it's going to be for the economy. And like, yeah, you fucking nitwit. Do you know what's a really good idea? Do some of that in other cities as well. <laughs> uh, my God. Do that in I'm Manchester still, and Leeds. Uh, st- still up here in Glasgow waiting for my 1930s planned subway extension. <laughs> yeah, um, <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah. so I, I, it's, we, we had the first train run through. We had a lot of people show up at like uh, you know zero dark 30 to, to take the first train. And it, it, it's always nice to see a sort of a pride festival, a train's pride festival. It, there were um, hundreds, uh, like thousands of people queuing at 5 a.m. to get onto this thing. It was kind of really it was beautiful. Like this. People really have like a great deal of affection for this, uh, not least because it cuts their commute by like half or more. Yes. Um, a, a friend of mine is a, is a driver on this, and he was uh, uh, waiting to, uh, he was stuck waiting in the back room as a, like a reserve driver uh, when the first train left. And off of this, he got a little welcome pack of four perfect purple wrapped caramels and a little Elizabeth line bag, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is just such a perfect twee British thing. And just as he was about to like look at these things, the fire alarm went off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, you, you gotta, you gotta get oh, out. Oh yeah, because no. everyone yeah. had to leave. Yeah, like it was like a bit of an alarm. Everyone had to go outside, and it was all very orderly and everything. You yeah, know, it was good. Loads of people. What I was possibly the photos I was enjoying most, including one taken by Sir Peter Hendy, who's like the equivalent of the Fat Controller um, <laughs> now on Network Rail, but he was like the London transport dude. Um, and uh, beforehand, and anyway, he, uh, yeah, it was just a picture he took, and everyone in it looked bored and like they were waiting for a train, which I love. On the first day of this thing opening, already people are just angry about the fact they have to use it. <laughs> They're like, it's like it's been there forever. But that's what, to be fair, that's exactly what public transport should be like. A, uh, you begrudge that you get on it, but fine. It, it, it makes your life easier, but you're not you know you're not fussed by it. And I was I was loving the fact that within three or four hours of it opening, there were like twenty people within this photograph, all who looked kind of grumpy and didn't care, and were just going to get their regular <laughs> train to work. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So we we have because Crossroad used to be high speed one, right? Um, it was well, it, no, no. So okay. <laughs> It, Crossrail, oh man, there's I was, long I was, history. I was oh, setting God. up for a joke give here. Those, uh, you I know. Give, what, you give those uh, Chinese uh, rapid metro systems a run for their money, run the trains at 186 <laughs> miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kill three of the people in this photograph instantly. Yes. Um, the, like it, Ferrari it, acceleration. <laughs> the, the joke that I was going to make was that if, if Crossrail or the Elizabeth line was high speed one, we could sort of just think of it as like nice thing one. Maybe we could do a, a second nice thing. We could do some yeah. kind of nice thing two. Up and a down nice the country. Thing too. What could that be? I wonder. Yeah, no, I don't know mm. anything about that at all. I don't know what that might be, or indeed that its eastern <laughs> leg has been cancelled. I believe it will uh, be a bridge to Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's genuinely we just had this moment of realizing, oh, transport infrastructure can make everyone's lives better and people quite like it and they appreciate it and they're willing to like uh support the stuff that it takes to make it happen. Uh, yeah, let's not do any more of this. You was know, all, this oh, was like right, pulling teeth that. in the first place. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. can't do this anymore. We can't do this. We just have to continue to utterly dismantle everything that p- remains positive about the country. No, I was on, uh, and the thing, the trouble is, like, I was on. This just typifies it. I was on um, BBC Radio Manchester, mo- kind of grumbling about the lack of the fact that this is great, but like th- everyone's saying this is great. So it's like, yeah, so do this in other places as well. There's no reason not to. But obviously, the response I got from the from the dear uh, lady who was kind of. Uh, helming the show was uh yeah but there's you know we've got you know money's very tight at the moment and i just sort of i just sort of tightened like kind of crunched my neck and sort of Mm. put my head in my hands and did the picard meme it Uh, it, it helps the economy the economy doesn't have to be based purely on scams if people can get to work or go to the shops or any of these things my understanding about britain is that there's one city it's called london and everything else is a tiny little village called like Bumblebury upon fuckweed. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. it's it, it's, so, yeah. it's sort of a self fulfilling prophecy, is the thing. Like London is this sort of like the one city that everything else drains into. Is yeah. It, 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 some of that sort of like. Uh, occurs by itself, but a lot of it's just perpetuated by policies that are like, well, this is the way it is, it can't be any other the way, people, and therefore it's pointless the, all the, to try. All those, all those other cities, I'm pretty sure, were made up to make uh, uh, documentaries about the Beatles more interesting. Yeah, yeah Gl- uh, Glasgow, <laughs> Glasgow was built in uh, in 2002 as a film set in order mm. to provide Victorian buildings for uh, scene <laughs> seven London in places that had been demolished. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's it, like, uh, but the thing is, people forget that London it wasn't always like this in London. Like London was in, in essentially terminal decline until the mid eighties. Mm. Like the the population was dropping. Everything looked shit. Um, you know, even more shit than perhaps in other parts of of Britain. <laughs> you know, I, I think I've already mentioned on this on 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 other episodes of this fine show about you know pieces of rust the size of a small cars falling off the uh, falling off the fourth bridge. No, oh, yeah. and anywhere. Napping. Any Just, and any like London <laughs> looked like every two thousand AD comic, like every comic yes. that's like uh, Britain in the eighties is shit. What if everywhere was as dystopian as this? That's just London. And the thing that <laughs> fixed it was the DLR. Mm. Like, that was basically the thing that turned it around. And also, you know, in, empowering the the kind of what was the Greater London Authority to, or what was the Greater London, or the Lon- the council, and then the Greater London Authority, all that naf- local politics. But. <laughs> Like they got more power, and then they decided to make their public transport better, and all of a sudden London started turning around. And it's amazing that no one joins these fucking dots. Build trains, folk. Mm. Build trains. Build trains. Also, international finance capital. Oh yeah, oh. also that. Yeah, build up an entire <laughs> bubble. Yeah, yeah, that's that's also just, true. Just handcuff your capital city to to these yuppies. It's going to be fine. Exactly. Forever. Everything about that will be fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cut to twenty years later, and everything is an axe throwing bar. <laughs> oh my yeah, yeah. god! Yeah, well, it's just this picture here, where this guy, <laughs> uh, this guy. To be fair, the future of our country um, here, and oh, then yeah. and then that young guy drinking a bottle of water. <laughs> yes, <laughs> shaking hands across the generations. You know, yes. past and future. <laughs> yeah. Um, in other news, are you ready for a jarring shift in tone? Yes. <laughs> oh. Ripped from the headlines. Uh, so if 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 Britain can only do like one thing, the United yeah. States of America cannot do that. And in fact, we, we it can do only zero do things. things. Yeah, and yeah. the things that you do do are a guy walks yeah. into an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas, kills thirteen kids plus a teacher, and then gets shot by the cops. Yes, uh, I kind of I made my peace with this after like Sandy Hook that I I kind of intuitively like learned that nothing would ever change. Uh, that that like the moment that that became acceptable, and that was like sort of an acceptable level of collateral is like young young children getting getting murdered, and mm-hmm. nothing changes. That that nope. sort of that's when I got black pilled about this stuff. Really <laughs> about about gun rights or whatever. Um, like ab- absolute absolute refusal to do even the most basic common sense. Uh, like. Anything, anything. You, you you can't fucking take the guns off of someone who like is whose Twitter at is future school shooter. I, yeah, yeah that, that, no, that 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 guy's protected by uh, federal law. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's it. a First Amendment. Yeah, you can't touch yeah, him for yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Um, what was this? Uh, was this a student who did the shooting, or was it just know. some guy? We don't, oh, know, we don't yeah. know. Okay, yeah, this happened like an hour ago, as of time of recording. Um, <laughs> No. I just, I, uh, Alice, I'm exactly the same. I just can't process this. I mean, I don't. Britain is a is a you know, the United Kingdom is a dump collection of countries, right? Sure. You know, we have we lots like of to problems. kill our children through neglect. We kill our children. Exactly. Through, yeah, we do. Oh, the, we, the, we do that the right too way here. Neglect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. But like the one thing we did was there was a school shooting, and then we've never had one since because we did a load of gun bans and just yeah. changed. We just changed the law and made that not happen again. Yeah, and as much as like, I like seize and cope about the fact that I can't walk around with a Glock, which I would absolutely do if it were legal, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of prefer me seething and coping to pile of dead children. So you know, it's it's kind of you know you got to weigh these things. But also, you could also sell all schools um, Kevlar school uniforms. So that's true. That's oh, true. Yeah, also, the, well, Texas, uh, the, the bulletproof backpacks. Um, Texas, like, Texas, yeah. Texas yeah. lets its teachers be armed in schools, I believe. So this is true. Yes, you know, maybe what this needed was the teacher, if they weren't armed, to be armed, and if they were armed, to be better armed. 
Yeah, well, you know, that that's that that's uh definitely like the teacher to cop uh pipeline that the whole country has gone down is an interesting one. Uh cuz you know, I especially since so many of these schools now have like school resource officers who's like job who, who, like, is to like arrest an 11 year old. Um, uh, yeah. You know, as like give, a give show all of force. 11 year olds a deagle. That's what you have to do. Yeah. That's, the, that's the only thing you can do. That would be hilarious watching an eleven year old <laughs> shoot a desert eagle and then get like the recoil like flings them down them in a corridor. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh no also this is horrifying. Uh yes. yeah, they're, they're just Oh my yeah. god. Like the, the Stoneman Douglas high school shooting in, in Florida where they had a school resource officer, like a cop functionally, who was armed, who was there, and when the school shooting happened, just kind of like stanced up outside and did nothing. Oh immediately god. left. Yeah. Uh, is it, 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 I was reading a thing that the NRA is losing some grip of power, but is it basically being replaced by other libertarian weirdos? Like what what like Justin, what is is the NRA uh, still uh, as much uh, of a total? They, like, is it still gripping, grabbing government? I mean, the, what, what's the, going on? the NRA has has been having financial problems for a long time. The issue is like the NRA is no longer the source of this sort of politics. Yeah, okay. You know, no. it's taken on a life of its own. So even if you know some of these big institutions collapse, like I don't know the NRA or like some of these like big evangelical mega churches you know the thing has a life of its own you don't even need like the you know these big big like political institutions because uh, the, um, cause the you know, QAnon and all the crypto people have picked up where they left off so they're now yeah, like, if, if, especially if anything, QAnon yeah. yeah yeah and if anything you're sort of your newer generation of gun owners I get the sense kind of see the NRA as basically libs which is an insane yeah. thing to think, but to them, they more or less are just like as you know, seventy-year-old guys with their pants hitched all the way up who only want to talk about nineteen elevens. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it's it, plus also legislatively they've won. They've gotten everything they could have wanted. It's secured basically forever thanks to the Supreme yes. Court. Um, yeah. yeah, so you know, there's not a lot of need. That, it's harder to keep that sort of hysteria going of Biden is going to personally come to your house and he's going to take your AR-15. Basically, uh, all the people who like ultimately the capitalist machine, which is what wants the NRA wanted the NRA to exist. The NRA did its hmm. job, so now it's yeah. now they've like uh, individualized it into QAnon and into all the kind of this 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 new new age sort of neo fascist little little kids who are now libertarians. Yeah, they've, for sure. they've managed to yeah. turn that, and it's easier because they can do it. Oh man, it's so yeah, okay. So they, they've of, won, but they just need to keep winning. So yeah. they've turned it into QAnon. A yeah, couple, okay. couple of other things. Uh, the NRA also uh, d- d- personally, allegedly quite corrupt. Uh, the leadership of the NRA quite content to sort of spend a lot of money and uh, non-profit money on private jets and vacations and luxury clothing yeah. and stuff. But also, uh, there's been a pandemic. It's killed a lot of older people. Uh, a lot of older people, especially who are less likely to to mask and to get vaccinated, and a lot of whom are NRA members. So. Um, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think they may genuinely have lost some people that way. Oh, you got such a firm hold on the courts at this point that you know, oh, and yeah. on you know, sort of general the political establishment that you know, at, at, at this point, I don't think anyone's right to own a gun is being restricted in any fashion, any time in the foreseeable no. future, um, regardless of what kind of I don't know. Maybe maybe someone will like, you know, they'll they'll bring in a armed team of QAnon commandos and <laughs> go go shoot up a daycare. Um, it won't yeah. do anything. No. You know, have, have a body count in the three figures. Nope. If anything, it's going to ratchet <laughs> just, in the yeah. other way and like President Tom Cotton or whatever is going to overturn the assault weapons ban. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, well, then everyone the Black gets Pan, bazookas. W- what yeah. they'll have to do what you have to do if you want gun control in this country is bring back the Black Panthers. <laughs> that's, that's the right. only way you would have that's movement right. if, in if, the direction you, of gun control. If, if, if you are a leftist <laughs> and you want gun control, the answer is to buy as many guns as possible, carry them openly and yes. publicly, talk about it often. Yeah. Establish a leftist militia. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Arm all trans people. That's right. Uh, get 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 BLM like convert. Okay, BLM actually is an organization a bit dubious at the moment, but like get all of, like, the the grassroots BLM campaigners to like become corporals. Yeah. And uh yeah, Absolutely. just arm up. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Now the issue is if you personally are one of the people being who are arming up, 
you will be arrested and thrown in prison after yeah, these laws you, come down. Like, yeah, you will be extremely disarmed for sure. Yes, you will. You will go to federal pound me in the ass prison. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's almost as if these these constitutional rights are being applied unequally. Yeah, I, I wonder what the connect. That, what no, the dots we have that connect a democracy them. here, Alice. <laughs> unlike <laughs> your, unlike your your monarchist. That's Great right. Britain. A sclerotic yeah. sort of dead <laughs> queen country. Yes. yes. Yeah. We fought a war over this. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, how depressing. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's one of those unpleasant things about America that you just become completely desensitized to. And, you know, this news comes out and you're like, hmm, you know, this guy got a decent body count, huh? And that's all you can really think about it. <laughs> yeah, well, at least at least you kind of almost got over the the sort of pathological thing. You remember like five, ten years ago when everybody was like everybody was sort of like leftist to liberal right through to like Michael Moore was like the reason why school shootings happen is because we make school shooters celebrities. And when they do a school shooting, you know, you put their name on the papers, you put their their face on the news. And that's what that's what they want. That's what makes it like that. By and large, American media organizations stopped doing this, and that didn't matter either. It so didn't I, matter. Yeah, we've kind of ticked that one off the list of like, mm -hmm. oh, it wasn't that. So uh, it's, what it's, else could it yeah. be? Yeah, I wonder, like uh, like putting mm. lead back into paint. That might uh, that might help. That might yeah. reduce the chances. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the true. Yeah, was, back we that, could yeah. we could. I have I have two ideas. One is the sort of the one that I don't want to do, which is to make firearms less accessible. Um, but the other one is to like maybe improve society, um, and try to like counter methods of radicalization, uh, make what, reduce people's inequality, material what? conditions no. 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 slightly no. slightly better. No. Try to like confront things no. like racism earlier. I don't. I don't think that's possible. No, everything. No, it everything really isn't. I've read and have been told that it tells me that's just not possible. You can't do no, that. You just have to. Do it. No. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, can we talk about something fun like a, a terrible train crash now? Of course we yeah, can. Let's do that. Uh, Ooh, nice right. building. Yeah, Ooh. this is Gare de Lyon. Oh, I've just seen the picture in the bottom right hand corner. Yes, uh, the station throat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you walk us through that little sort of cackle <laughs> that you just made? <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. That's a that's it's a personal matter. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can see pro you can see the old what I presume is the old uh, freight uh, kind of the freight uh, connections there that have been mm -hmm. severed. That's oh, not the, like the ones it. that wait where down here or uh, like down somewhere. Else. So you can see sort of there's there's the old sheds kind of oh, the wait. to the uh, the the right hand uh, side of the station throat where everything gets narrow. You can see oh, there's like another shed and a, another station turn. That's it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. I can't quite. Your John Maddening is highly pixelated for me, so I'm I'm just seeing bl blurry red. Uh, I, I, you're right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so uh, Gare de Lyon is French for station station of Lyon. Of Lyon. That's right. right? <laughs> yeah. One of yeah, famously, they're from the same family as I am, the Gareth. We I, we are inherently stations. That's that's, that's where my name <laughs> comes from. Gareth de Leon is your yeah, crusader Gareth, ancestor. Gareth, yes, Gareth of Lyon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I kind of liked when we had this uh, thing of naming train stations after where they went to, like you know Leningradsky Station or Gard you know Gardner. Yeah, I would like King's yeah. Cross to be called Edinburghsky Station. That would be quite nice. Oh, that would That'd be that would good, fuck. Yeah. yeah, that that is again. That's a 2000 AD comics thing about what Britain <laughs> under communism would look like. Is it would be Edinburghsky Station? Uh, that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be confusing in like Philadelphia. Uh, the, the 30th Street Station would be a uh, um Pittsburgh Station, I guess. Fuck that goes. That <laughs> no, sounds better. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it goes, it, 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 Houston it would be, is like it, Glasgow Station, Glasgow Skyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that a lot. Uh, mm. Don't ask about what some pancakes yeah. would be. Very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why I'm thinking 30th Street Station would be confusing because it goes so many places. Mm. Some pick pancakes would be like Midland Station, yeah. maybe. Midlandsky. Yeah. yeah Midlandsky. Midlandskaya. Um, so, yeah, no one wants to talk about Sheffield, though. So. <laughs> the first station at this location was built between 1847 and 1849. Or oh god, 
<laughs> I need some Don't help rush. here. Compagnie de chemin de fer de Paris à Lyon et à la Méditerranée. All right, pretend I said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, 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 the railway, the, the, the Paris to Lyon and Mediterranean railway company. All right, uh, yeah. So the uh, the very the American naming scheme of that, like that you is, say you say where it goes from to where you think it wants to go to. I also continue the, the to love Chemin de Fer as in I, yeah Iron Road, the company oh, yeah. of the Iron Road from Paris to Lyon. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah, um, they expanded the station several times over the years. It took its uh, current, it largely what its current form is in 1900, right? Yeah, it looks yeah. it. It is a fan de cycle ass wedding yeah. cake building. Oh yeah, that, that fucking little Ottoman ass looking clock tower, incredible. It's nice. I, I like it. I like it a lot. I oh, find yeah, I like it, it so pretentious. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm. Not, I think some of the head house is from like the Houseman era, but like. Mm. Most of like the train shed and stuff is newer than that. Um, it has 32 tracks. Some are in the old train shed here. Some are newer ones that are over here, right? Uh, they got four underground tracks. I think maybe eight underground tracks actually for the uh, RER. Yeah, right? I think it is eight. Yeah, and the, the RER uh, is their crossrail. It's their sort yeah. of like Trans yeah, Paris yeah. Express the, sort of the, S bahn light rail. The, the uh, Rezo Express Regional. Yeah, yeah it's pretty pretty <laughs> much an allegory for crossrail. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's it double decker trains uh, with with like one door per coach or whatever it is. Like, no, like they got three doors on each side and like six staircases. <laughs> wow, <laughs> they're yeah. weird as hell. <laughs> yeah, they don't work. They're a capacity disaster. But uh, yeah, so that's 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 for another episode. We could just do the RERs. Add, add, oh add another God. story on that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they already did with a TGV. Just fuck it. Do 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 a duplex TGV. So yeah, that yeah. works when the train sits there yeah. for half an hour. But when it's there for thirty seconds, it's it's pandemonium. It's not so good. Yeah, <laughs> I I just learned yesterday. Oh God, I just had a horrible idea. Multi-level what? platforms for multi-level trains. You just build a second platform at the level of the second story, and you just someone must have tried that at some for the, point. For the record, uh, I, I wanted to be uh, added to the record that um, Gareth is weeping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. Mm. <laughs> it works for elevators. You just mind the gap. It's easy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> just hop over. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Fall one story onto the edge of a platform. <laughs> so, like, um, uh, you know, today this uh, the the Gare de Lyon. It's mostly trains heading south. You know, towards yeah. Lyon. Sure. Right. Uh, today, this includes uh, TGV services. You know, the high speed trains. Also, Frecciarossa goes here now. If you want an actual Ooh. good train. Oh man, I took Frecciarossa last week and it is still good it is so fucking good um it best train experience i've ever had uh god i gotta try some italian trains you gotta oh, take for the, sure do that i mean yeah. all their trains are good even the ones that are bad are good because that's you're true in Italy. actually I, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I have like, this sort of moment of internationalism, right? Where I, yeah. it's, it's the same thing as when I get in an airport, and like now it sucks because every every sort of airline is just a sort of cheap commercial airline. But it used to be like you could go to the airport and you could see this little fucking model UN of, of like national flag carriers, and you yeah. could be like, "Oh, cool, that's fucking like you know Air Afrique or whatever." Um, exactly the same. If I walk into a train shed and there's like, you know, there's a French train, there's an Italian train, there's a fucking Belgian train over there, I'm just like. Oh, that that like that lights up all the fucking pleasure centers in my brain. That's for sure. I, I believe Trenitalia is actually just trying to compete on the Paris to Lyon route, which is really funny. Although those trains do go to Milan, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, just I've because taken, I've taken that. It's a, it's a, it's actually like it used to be. So, so yeah, the the the, the like cheap knock, basically the old TGV trains, which I, I'm sorry are horrible inside. Um, I took that from <laughs> Milan to uh, no, actually I took it from Rome to Paris. And uh, is that right? No, it wasn't. It was from uh, I, basically I used the connection up from like the the top of Italy to get up to, to Paris, Pro and it was yeah. it was not nice. Uh, and I would absolutely take the Trenitalia one mm. instead because it'd be so much nicer. Because those interiors they are really nice. They're really, They're nice. really nice. The trains yeah. are very comfortable. Rich you go to Corinthian leather. Yeah, go to the cafe <laughs> car. They got a goddamn uh, espresso machine in there. Like they they have everything. It's 
Tranitalia, sponsor our podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. It yeah. probably won't after all the slander against the Italian state we've done on all of the Italian episodes. <laughs> well, 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 if it's not Tranitalia, then get the Austrians in. They've done nothing bad through history. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Plus they've got an umlaut yeah. on the thing. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Obey, yeah. Bay. Go for it. Yeah. 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 Sounds a bit so, like the opening to a Salt and Pepper song. Already so made got- that joke several <laughs> episodes ago. <laughs> So you got you got TGVs, you got Fretcher Rosses, you probably got some trains to go to Germany or some bullshit. I don't know. Yeah, you got some you got some ECA, certainly. Yeah. Um, trains out you, the ass. It's a big got, station. Yeah, yeah, it's a big station. You got slow trains, you got regional trains, you got uh it's the second busiest station in Paris after Gare du Nord, right? Mm-hmm. But in addition, of course, you have the RER platforms in the basement, right? Sure. Um, the, these were built in the early 1980s. They built underground platforms for RER A first, I want to say. Um, and then later they're going to put in RER D. They thought they could fit it in. But RER A was, had such high ridership that they actually had to build four more platforms underneath. Wow. Four more tracks underneath for the RER D trains, which in the interim, that was just a stub-ended platform until they built the tunnels out to Gare du Nord. Right. Yeah, the history of these is as complicated as the actual station itself. Like it's quite when you when you go into the guts of um uh, like underneath the original station and try and get the RER, it is quite confusing. And, and then with the metro going through as well, it it yeah, it gets a bit uh, just a little less confusing it. than the actual history. Yeah, I'm just looking here at the sort of RER map, and because it includes everything else, like because uh, you need to make your connection or whatever, it integrates the like the the SNCF, the the metro. And I think even some bus routes are on here too. Incomprehensible. Like it, it uses sort of broadly the the London tube map design, which is like nice. It's nice and comprehensible. It's schematic. It helps you understand where you're going and like how to make your connections. This this is a chaos rune. Um, one of those. It's one of those things where you're you're never going to understand the system until you actually use it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Which um. I guess it's true of a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of transit networks, um, mostly in Italy, uh, <laughs> which don't make any sense, right? So, RER is complicated. Yeah, RER is very complicated. Uh, don't think about it until you have to use it, and then you know, just sort of go on a platform and see what happens. Yeah, um, which is you get pickpocketed. Correct. Yes, <laughs> they, they pickpocket you on the RER. It's a Paris train station. They pickpocket you everywhere, but the oh, RER is not wow. particularly notorious. Yeah, make sure I'm, you sellotape your uh, wallet to your boobs. That's that's the advice <laughs> I've always been giving. See, this is this is the thing, right? About crime and like petty theft in the United States versus Europe. Yeah, we right? have a lot more pickpockets. It, Even in the UK, we still have some. Yeah. yeah, like in the United States, if someone wants your wallet, they you know they they come up to you, they put a gun in your face, they say, give me your wallet, and a transaction occurs, there's right? No, yeah, there's no craft to it, though, is there's, there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lost art. <laughs> the thing is, right, because because two things, the, the sort of like the availability of firearms, it, it works it on both ends. It's much more easy for me to have a gun to rob you with, but also, if I just reach in your pocket, there's a decent chance you have a gun, you could just fucking hold me at gunpoint. And now That's the whole point. situation's turned around on me. Now my you're dip. the one mocking me. Yeah, I know. I take that guy's wallet. <laughs> my, my, well, pickpocketing is like such an elaborate operation, though, right? My dad mm. got pickpocketed in uh, Rome, and I now realize that there was a whole series of people involved to make it happen. Oh yeah, it's a really sort of complex. You need at least like uh, four or five people to make it practical. Oh, yeah, it's what, like what, an Ocean's Eleven. Uh, yeah, yeah montage. exactly. Because yeah, yeah. it's like what what happened was we were waiting <laughs> for the metro, right? The doors opened to the metro, and there was a nun there, right? Mm. Uh, suspect. Then, yeah. <laughs> Always punch the nun. Just yeah. straight, <laughs> straight in. And then three guys got on a train ahead of us, and they all seemed to know the nun. And then they, <laughs> they, they just stood there in the open door, blocking everyone from getting in the train, right? Mm-hmm. Then my dad and I were just standing there like, what the hell are these people doing? Blocking the way into the metro. 
Did you try and, and push and past them? Meanwhile, a little I, I weedy did push Billy Elliot them. character runs That's behind small. you, nicking your wallets. wallet. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I pushed past them. Dad waited, and then Dad lost his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the main the main thing you got to do is to try at any cost not to look like a tourist. Look yeah. as angry and as surly as possible. Uh, Always keep moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Or wear really tight, like fully tight Prince trousers. That's the other alternative. That's you, you could option, get yeah. those like uh, anti pickpocket trousers with the like multi. You got to solve a little logic puzzle to get any of the pockets <laughs> open. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I my my friend. Uh, wait, I forget who told me this. I think it was had a, a like a wallet on a chain. That was linked. Oh, to that's jacket. funny. You just get like yanked like three <laughs> feet in a, in like any direction oh, by no, somebody. Some, oh, it was a purse on a chain, and uh, someone on a on a Vespa tried to grab it. Oh, oh fuck! My God. And they got pulled off the Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> that's practice. My, my my favorite genre of mugging is much more of a sort of like tourist in global south phenomenon, which is like it's half a it's half a pickpocketing, half a mugging, where you just get mobbed by like twenty people or like twenty kids or whatever, and they're like ostensibly trying to sell you something, or even not, they're just like pushing you around and grabbing all of your shit. That's, right, yeah. That that's <laughs> my favorite kind of like street theft because it, there's so there's so little artifice to it, you know. It's just it's it's very very sort of straightforwardly acquisitive. See, I, again, we don't have this in the United States because everyone can buy a gun. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> you know, with with modern double stack magazines, you could take out a bunch of those kids in it's like true. very very quickly. You got to practice that drill, but it can be done. There are trade offs. Accuracy is not important when you're spitting out lead at that rate. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, you don't understand. I need to carry this this, this like PDW, uh, and I need to go fully automatic with it because what if twenty five orphans try and take my wallet? <laughs> So yeah, the RER you will yeah. get pickpocketed. Yes. Um, tr try not to take it too personally. Uh, yes. Also, keep or alternatively keep a decoy wallet, which is the funniest fucking thing you can do. Don't have every single thing you own in one wallet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh dear. Um. Anyway. So yeah. Uh, the point of this was to say there are underground platforms. Mm -hmm. Um. Now you can get a train on them. Aside from getting pickpocketed. Yes. This is a Z fifty three hundred. No, it isn't. It is a uh, coffee van from Shoreditch. Uh, a year <laughs> yeah, ago. it's a Citroen H van. Yeah, <laughs> I I really like this. It looks yeah. ugly as hell. Uh, the fucking little like the stripes down the side, um, or the corrugation down the side. I guess yeah. the it shape of like, the headlights. It looks right. like a Jersey Arrow with more visibility for the driver. Yeah. Um, also, the drivers play Minecraft there. You can see. Yeah, yeah. It looks like. Yeah, he does look like he's got a little laptop there. <laughs> Certainly not looking <laughs> yeah. where he's going. <sighs> That's fine. So this is uh this was a, a a commuter train used on RERD as well as various Paris commuter uh, lines for mm -hmm. a long time. They were built in 1965 to 1975 by Carol Fouch. Right. Stopped using them in, I think, 2013. Uh, um, a little bit later than that. I think they're the last ones were retired in 2017. Oh, wow. Nice. Um, and these, uh, these were built entirely out of stainless steel using bud patent products, uh, processes, because uh, Carol Fausch had the, uh, the bud patent for France. Yeah, here but we don't go. Break. 20, but don't break, baby. But don't break. Yeah, that's why they kept using them for so long, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I also like SN SNCF have had like so many dreadful logos. Uh, this is probably one of the least dreadful logos they've had. Yeah, I kind of oh, like yeah. it. I, I yeah. hate the current sort of logo type. Also, one little fun fact about these these are some of the most heavily graffitied trains in perhaps the world. Um, because the RER is like very, very easy to get onto its, its property. Uh, particularly in a lot of suburban Paris, 
uh, whether or not it's just abandoned who, railways yeah. where you can just get onto it, and yeah. then that abandoned railway very rapidly becomes an intensely used commuter line. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, no apparent sign of change. Yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of kids in like suburban Paris who want to graffiti trains, uh, and you have this big broad surface mm. um, that you can just really sort of like you know do a lot of really bold color work on. So I you know I, I think that's a little sort of cultural facet of its own. Yeah. And when you uh, finish the artwork, someone leans out the window and gives you a cortado. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. I will tell you this. Um, I took the Cir- Circumvesuviana in Naples, and I believe that is probably more heavily graffitied than <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, anything this could be, um, <laughs> especially since these are stainless steel. They're easier to clean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Circumvesuviana, it just looked like they, they were like, ah, well, that's just a fresh coat of paint. Just leave yeah, it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta think there's gotta be uh, 75 layers of graffiti on there. It's gonna start slowing the train down at some point. But <laughs> Yeah, at what point about? does that become serious additional deadlift? Yeah, yeah you're, you're just point. like snapping off hunks of Fordite off of this train. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, sorry, Roz, we, uh, we, we sidetracked horrendously. This is, so this is, this is an electric train, yes. DC... Yes, fifteen hundred uh, volt DC electric multiple unit. Uh, how many car? What well, formation is it? It's is it long? No, these are, these weren't that long actually. They're uh, they're four unit trains permanently coupled. You could couple two of them together, get an eight unit train. Nice. Uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a basic commuter train. There's not much to say about it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's fine. fine. It's a nice yeah. box, nice little tin, tin can. Yeah. Uh, probably accelerates pretty good. Probably stops pretty good. Although it's electric, when that's it the good thing about yeah, electric. Exactly. It can just it's fine. Just it goes, it stops, goes. good, it's fine. Yeah, so marsh. Mm-hmm. Oh, oui, oui. Oh, oui. So on the twenty seventh of June, nineteen eighty. Already? Oh yeah. God. Jeez, are we up, we're only seven slides in, and you're already reading a day out, Ross. Cry. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, well, I've not know. even got my like uh, grunty Par- Parisian uh, accent out yet. And we're, we're already <laughs> cracking out dates. So. SNCF ran commuter trains uh, into Gare de Lyon from a place called Milan. 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 Yeah, yeah, they sell. Yeah, they sell. Um, they sell grapefruit there. Oh, that makes <laughs> sense, right? Uh, this was train one five three nine four four. Right, it was an evening inbound train driven by a man named Daniel Solon. Sola. 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 Yeah. I I don't speak French. <laughs> S A U L I N, Sola. Okay. Um, and then the, the guard was uh, Jean Charles Beauvais. Yeah. Okay. And this was an eight car train. So it was two of those uh, Z 5300s, right? Yeah. Coming in from, from the southeast <laughs> suburbs yes. into Gare de Lyon. Yeah. It was an evening train. So the people who work in the suburbs and live in the city. Uh, we're coming back into town now. There had been a summer schedule change, so the train skipped this station, uh, Le Vert de Maisons. That's probably skipping stations is fine. That that never causes yeah. any problems or puts people out. Right. House is green. Le Vert de Maison. Le Vert de Maison. Okay, yeah. Anne of Green Gables. Yes, uh, it's, yeah. it, it skips. Yeah. It skips Anne of Green Gables because, yeah. as you can see uh, on on the sort of bottom side of the uh, platform, that they build a mosque and uh, oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Uh, an opportunity to do racism oh, sh- by excluding sure enough, Muslims yeah. from the transit network yeah. is not yeah. one that the SNCF will ever pass up. No. <laughs> of course. <laughs> see, I, I, this this station's called Green Houses. I, these houses are all white. No, no, it's, it's, like, it's like it's like green green of houses, like uh, green in the sense of like a village green. I think. Oh, like a uh, common. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I don't like that. Um, Is that anyway. five over ones they're building in the background? Oh. No, those oh. aren't legal in Europe. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, that's another thing we've got over you guys. Yes, those are legal because of an accident in the building code. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so this is sort of an inner ring suburb. It's fine, we did Grenfell, so uh... yeah. <laughs> and uh, a woman, a woman named Adelaide Miriam. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. 
Odile Miroir, I think. Yeah, I would yes. so pretend, go with Odile. Yeah. Pretend I said that. Um, was not aware of the schedule change. Odile Miroir, because that's like... Yeah. Uh, what was the f- how would I pronounce the name? Miroir. Miroir? Yeah. 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 And she didn't want to keep her kids waiting at school, so she did the only rational thing. Which was, of course, to pull the emergency brake and get off the train. <laughs> oh, dear. No. The most, no. You could the get most a, Parisian thing ever. You, you, could get, you could get up to a 500 pound fine for that. <laughs> oh, they, no, I will go and pick up my children. <laughs> if they put a little sticker on the thing, you could be, you could be out 500 quid, even. <laughs> There is no chance I am missing my little puppies. I am going to <laughs> this train right now. I, I mean, I, I get it. Like, you got childcare is a fucking fraught subject. Oh, well, and, yeah, that's Yeah, and I'm pretty... like, fine, okay, I guess. Yeah. But you can't be pulling that, th- you can't be pulling that shit. You can't pull the emergency brake if it's not an emergency. Because it, 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 bad things happen. The first Broke, thing... Pulling the emergency cord, woke, diving straight out the window. Yes, which is <laughs> break the window, roll free. Throw, yeah. throw in the suitcase tuck out of your roll, window. Tuck and roll into your garden. <laughs> this is this is all OLE, right? So you don't you can yeah. just walk across the tracks. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, yeah, you no get problem. hit by a train. Yeah, yeah sure. I used to go to a summer rowing camp, right, mm. out of Thompson's Boathouse in Georgetown, in Washington D.C. Uh, uh, that's my connection to uh, the global political elite. Right there. Sure. Uh, anyway, so there was an uh, emergency exit from the metro in the back of the boathouse. And every what? day, yeah, every day I took the blue line over there and I was like, you know, in the tunnel, I was like, you know, you know, I could save 15 minutes of walking if I just pulled the emergency <laughs> there, brake. <laughs> there was one of the sort of great British eccentrics. I think it might have been Jack Churchill. I'm not sure, but he it got is a, he, Jack Churchill. Yeah, yeah, you know the story I'm about to tell. Yeah. Uh, I, if I think possibly we've we've told this one on a former we. I don't think I was on it. Yeah. Well, his, uh, I'll, I'll just mention possibly, it again. His, his I think, house, I think it was house, lions led by donkeys. <laughs> his house backs <laughs> onto the railway line, and of course, he learned to recognize his house, and so he. He would just oh, yeah. open. It was one of these old slam door trains. He would just open the window, throw his briefcase into his own back garden, <laughs> so he didn't have to walk it home. That's fucking great. I would also oh, do that. That is good. Ah, oh, inspired. Yes. So she pulled the emergency brake, right? And of course, the emergency brake. This means we have to talk about train air brake systems. Yeah, I'm getting horrible flashbacks to my first appearance where we were talking about uh, train brake systems with a diagram that looked not dissimilar to yeah, this. Yeah, it might even be the same diagram. <laughs> I, I'm going to recapitulate yeah, all of this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so your air brake. The principle is, right? Mm. When the air pressure in the main train airline is reduced, the brakes come on. Yeah, it's a, it's a pressurized it's a pressurized tube runs the whole length of the train, and that holds the brakes open rather than close. And when it loses pressure, they close. Which, right? Which I always like more uh, than the American system because for me in my head, this feels like a, a system that fails safe. Uh, more we'll get obviously. Into it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm. Is there a different air brake system in Europe than in the United States? But isn't it the, so? Isn't there a system where you pump air into the system? To uh, release the brakes rather than to apply the brakes, whereas here it's the, the it's the fact that um, you know this is the vacuum this is a vacuum brake system. Am I am I am I merely becoming highly confused? No, I think the, the vacuum brakes are like an old system that was just in Britain. I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, I know I'm pretty sure this train had a more modern like Westinghouse style air brake system, right? But like the the pressure in the train line, you know controls the pressure in each individual brake cylinder on the cars, right? Yeah. Sure. And we can see these these two big rectangles here, the main reservoirs, um, where you keep pressurized air to keep, to like refill the line, right? Because you've got to brake and then, you know, start and then brake again, especially on a fucking commuter train. Yeah. So you have to be able to refill that pressure in the um in, in the yeah, brake yeah. line, lots of braking need lo- need the ability to command lots of air to make the brakes work. Mm-hmm. 
It's a very complicated sort of system of of of, of gas movement here. Yes, I, I, things get fancy around that equalizing reservoir. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, mm. yeah, because you you have the uh, the individual because the actual actuation of the the brake pad is from increasing the pressure from the car reservoir, but the increase in pressure is triggered by a reduction in pressure from the main brake pad. It, yeah, I see. I see. This is why I'm a permanent like, engineer. Yeah. I don't have to worry about this shit. I, I, I see the sort of the the uh, main reservoir pressure tank uh, line that kind of curves yeah. towards the brake pump. Uh, and yes. As as I understand it, that's the thing that actually like actuates the brake pump. Um, I, I, I the only conclusion I can draw from this right is that, like occasionally you you think about inventions and you're like, oh, this seems so obvious and elegant and simple that you know it, it's a miracle no one thought of this earlier. Um, uh, air brakes not one of those inventions, sort of the opposite. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, uh, Westinghouse just happened to have enough influence to make his uh, enough influence specifically with the Pennsylvania Railroad to make his <laughs> system standard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we need we need to get wings and strings rather than doing a, a running gear uh, diagram. We need wings and strings to do a brake system diagram that, that works. <laughs> uh, because this is uh, it's 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 mostly fail safe. It's not completely fail safe as we will see. Mm. Um, simply because you're using the well, pressure in the main train line to affect the pressure in a whole secondary system. Yeah, but it'd be too car. inefficient to yeah. have a whole separate brake reservoir rather than running it off of the main reservoir. Uh, yes. So, you know. Anyway, I, okay. Uh, to recapitulate here, in the w- when you reduce pressure in the pipe that goes down the whole train, what happens is through a series of uh, bullshit uh, here. <laughs> um, <laughs> Every individual car has a pr- compressed air reservoir that then has a valve open, which actuates the brake pad, pushing it against the wheel, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, and those reservoirs are also recharged by way of the main train line uh, uh, brake pipe, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and it's worth noting there... Uh, I might be about to shoot your fox here, uh, Ros, but there there are lots of levers I can see uh, connected to various things around here. There's so many there's, there's cocks, lots of mm-hmm. valves, levers, and of course cocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, many many cocks. Um, I mean your your big ones up here. This is the main. Uh, Some might call it paradise. Yes. <laughs> um. I'm not making the cutout cock joke again because I think I already did that the first time. Yes. So if you do an emergency brake application, right? You gotta what dump does, all this pressure out as yeah, fast you, as possible. If you dump the air, that dumps all the pressure out of the main train line as quickly as possible. It slams on the brake through the whole train. Um, depending on the Makes length of the a, train, that can take a long time. Makes for um, a very unpleasant braking experience. It's yes, loud as hell. It's loud. Uh, it can knock people over. It can damage equipment, so on and so forth. Well, se- several good reasons why you shouldn't just pull the emergency lever. Yeah, you don't want yeah. sort of a space balls type situation. <laughs> 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 um, you know, and 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 so this is why. Yeah, you generally don't want to use the emergency brake. Um. You have anyway. wheel flats and all sorts of horrible things as well. Like yeah, it's just yeah. bad. It, it's just you know, there's a good chance that all the wheels will need turning again after an emergency brake. So it's really bad practice. Yeah, and, so, but it's it, it's like fail safe in itself, right? In that, uh, once the emergency brake is on, the sort of imperative here is that the train doesn't move like ever until it's you know some time later. So it like all of the things that dump all of the pressure, and those just lock open, right? And yeah, it's definitely it's, much, it's yeah. a pain in the ass. Yeah, exactly. It creates a situation where it's a pain in the ass to do anything other than kind of wait a bit before you can move the train again. Yeah, because ordinarily yeah. You, you apply the brake, you still have pressure in the main reservoir. The brakes are still on. The train's not going anywhere, but it has that reserve so that you can like release and recharge the brakes relatively quickly. Whereas with this, it just is all just gone. Uh, you yeah. dump you dump the air, as they say. Mm. 
Um, so anyway, they dump the air. They're sitting at this platform. Right. She must have had pretty fast fucking reactions to see it, like, to recognize it was going past her station and hit the emergency lever and get it to stop in time and just hop off. Yeah. Because hey, yeah, this is 1988. That's basically, the, that's basically now, right? Yeah, more yeah, or less. It's basically now, yeah. Yeah. Quite something. Good mm-hmm. work. Uh, yeah. I feel like these trains, they, this thing looks like it weighs like about 50 pounds. It probably stops pretty quick. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, distribute, distributed brakes. This thing will, yeah, yeah right, it'll probably, hunker down pretty yeah. rapidly. Nice uh, B-way here. Look at these lovely, uh, lovely right? twin block oh, yeah. uh, Ooh. embedded sleepers. Lovely. There'll love be little hedgehogs some, under there. Love some concrete. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bad lovely. news. I'm going to use the restroom. Oh, no worries. Oh, no, right we, can just look at, we can just look at this lovely train. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Actually, I'm not looking at the train because it's that horrible logo face exactly as you oh, refer to Alice. It's yeah. just gross. It's just really bad. Underneath, however, lovely. Yeah. Very nice P-way. Just... I'm not so convinced by the fasteners, but it's, you know, it's not. Still, it's acceptable. <laughs> why, I'll, I'll why do, we don't do enough concrete sleepers in Britain, is my we opinion. Don't, we, we don't do enough slab track. Agreed. We just, more of that. More. It more looks slab nice. Track. It looks like the future to me. And... Whenever uh, I go on like uh, the overground, and a lot of the overground is with slab track, mm. and it's nice. It's just nice. We need to do more of it. It's 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 fit and forget mostly. It's it's good. It's good, yeah, it's good stuff. We will see more of it appearing in the future. HS two will. It, what what little is left of HS two will mm. be slab track. Uh, well, that's good. That's good. I'm just. I, I don't know, every so often when I'm like waiting on a train platform, I just realize very acutely that the way that we uh the way that we build railway permanent way when it's not like this is the finest technology of the eighteen sixties. And it's like yeah. we've gotten better at the metallurgy, we've gotten a lot better at like the sensors and stuff, but then at the end of the day we're like, oh, we just dump a bunch of like gravel and like wooden boards in there. And yep. it's 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 pretty much exactly the way it's looked. And the only thing that's really changed since since like the even the early part of the 1800s is that we stopped burying the rails, like we stopped putting mm. ballast right up to the rail level. That's pretty much the only thing that's changed. Everything else, okay, yeah. Now we use we use pre-stressed concrete sleepers now. We use, you know, the fasteners are better and blah blah blah, but fundamentally it's this the same shit that, that was there. You know, I, I, I like to point out, you know, railroads existed since the 1600s, and they mm. pretty much, the, the track, it's basically providing the same function that it did right the way back then. Trains yeah. have got snazzier, track pretty much does the same thing, but you know. We've kind of, we've ended up devolving, because now we have the fucking personal rapid transit thing, where it's like, oh, we'll just have rubber wheels, and what we'll do is we'll just do an, uh, a, a groove that they can run in, and we've just fucking brought wagonways back again. Yeah, yeah, we've literally brought wagonways back, except that it's just a car, it's just a car, folks. That's just, that's just a I'm, car. I'm so I'm angry that they replaced the Glasgow Airport rail link with a, an admittedly mooted, because they're not going to fucking do this either, but the proposal is... Personal rapid transit. Get Ugh. get in the pod, and we're going to drive you in a little fucking cableway, not a cableway, uh, in a little fucking wagonway from Paisley New Street to Glasgow Airport. Ah, it makes me so angry. The PRT, okay, PRT is just cars. It's just cars, folks. It's just cars. Justin, Justin, we're the uh, captain now. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've got, I, what about, future, what I've got, about I've, Morgantown, West Virginia? That's pretty train-like. Uh, well, it's, it's funny you should bring up uh, interesting <laughs> PRT from that particular era, because uh, uh, rail. I've got Big Mood Energy joining joining me on Rail Natter in a, in a few weeks to talk about mm. funky US Ooh. gadget bands from the 70s. So, uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, that's, that's a uh, mid-episode uh, plug right there. Yeah, we need to oh, get wait, now you need to do the advert. Program. Do the advert. The advert. There's the <laughs> fade. The fade is happening now. The, the advert, only advert that you hear is this one, and also Gareth's. Right. Yes. Okay. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is, you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks, you get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. 
Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. <laughs> I, I put it in in post. Yeah, I know. Thank, thank you, thank you, future <laughs> thank, Justin. Yeah, yeah. thank future, future Justin. Yeah, that Please. could have gone two different ways. We could have had we could have had the sort of PRT discussion, or we could have had the different European railway logo types discussion, where we talk about how a bad SNCF is and how yeah. weirdly good Deutsche Bahn's is. Yeah, Deutsche Bahn's always yeah, good. The yeah, older Deutsche one Bahn's and then the good, new one, yeah. both good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, why not both dot gif? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I kind of like the uh, the the big red Deutsche Bahn locomotives are good. Um, yeah, yeah the, uh, all of the SNCF branding looks terrible. Terrible. It's not good, I, is I, it? I, it's I really haven't. Not good. There's hasn't been like they did the big orange TGV. Oh, go back great. to that. All, it's go all been downhill that. since then. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> just, just they cannot work out how to brand their mm-hmm. system. Yep. Even the mm. Dutch do a great job of it. Come on, with France, the yellow and blue, by the Dutch. big yellow oh. and blue, that when, looks real good. Yeah, it, it, NS NS always looks great. It looked great on the the I think it's the Koploper, the big fucking yeah, yeah. yeah. The clamshell motherfucker. Yeah. Love that, love that guy. The only problem is that now yellow and blue has been co opted as a color scheme by IKEA, uh, and yeah. the, we we gotta like go in and we gotta all, we gotta brainwash people. So instead of seeing NS as the IKEA railway, we gotta make them see IKEA as the NS. Furniture store. Furniture store. Yeah, I, I uh, quite I, like. I, uh, I quite like Trenitalia's color scheme, which is whatever the local graffiti artists <laughs> think looks good. <laughs> Ren, Ren, Renfe looks okay, to yeah. be honest. I like Renfe in Spain. Um, the, yeah. the, the, that shit's good. Yeah. Mm. Um, You're joining us on the train livery podcast. Everyone, uh, yes. Because the thing is, I don't have enough technical knowledge to like d- talk about the trains themselves, but I can talk about the pretty colours. And uh, yeah, th- this one's terrible. It's dog shit. Essentially, I'm in the same boat. I, uh, you know, the, the <laughs> trains are trains. It's just but like, but I like yeah, how they look it, or don't look. I, I understand it on an extremely granular and like technical basis yeah. the stuff that they run on top of. But once the train comes <laughs> over it, that's someone else's department. I can just look at the colours. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, bad news, Gareth. You wrote this slide, therefore I'm going to make you do it. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, fine. That's fair enough. Yeah. So um so right. Pick the, the train is stopped. Uh the 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 lassies run off to get her kids. Um and mm-hmm. uh and, and the driver has, has left the cab. And in order to get the train moving in, the driver has to um Daniel, Daniel, Daniel uh, Salah. has to yeah. uh, he has to go back uh to the back of the first car. Uh so the first car being kind of you can see there's three doors, it's kind of at the back of that car. There's a panel, and um, uh, basically, that you have. To, there's a lever that you have to kind of uh, switch down to reset the the braking system to fill the the, the braking system back up, so you can get moving. Um, but because this, because we talked about this, the emergency stop kind of dumps all the air. It takes a bit of time for the whole system to kind of um, for that reset lever to basically work. And so the driver is kind of jamming this thing to try and get enough leverage to to kind of lift this lever. Yeah, and it's eventually got enough pressure on it. Yeah. Yeah, eventually got enough pressure on it by pushing against an adjacent lever. Uh, oh. For that, that that'll be relevant in some <laughs> moments. Uh, yeah, and basically, like, yeah. So in in doing so, the driver kind of inadvertently waggles this other lever out of place. Um, which you think, okay, well, you know, what's the what's the harm in waggling another lever slightly? Well, the trouble is that lever operated the main brake pipe valve, and he had just closed it. Which isolated the brakes on the rear seven cars of this eight car train. Oh no! Hey, but uh, the good oh. news is that the fucking the lever's going to turn way more easily because it's only refilling that much of the pipe. So yes. yeah, this is true, and indeed the, the lever, uh, le- the other lever moved pretty pretty nicely at that point. Um, but the, but it all is not lost because there is a failsafe when um when that uh, main brake pipe valve uh, is isolated, um and uh, so the train wasn't moving. The failsafe had indeed operated. Which is great, right? You think fantastic? No, because uh, <laughs> Solang um, kind of hadn't realised that he'd operated the kind of the main valve lever and thought that the emergency brake application had um, done a thing which does happen on these trains, apparently, according to the things that we've all read, um, which is that it builds up excessive pressure and seizes the brakes. So Solang enlisted uh, Bouvier's help, um, and together they just kind of walked down the train, uh, manually bleeding air 
from each break oh, in turn. Oh, oh no. Uh, which so, is fine, probably. So the, the, uh, the failsafe here is like, when you when you isolate all of those breaks, the breaks stay on. They stay, they, they, they yeah, seize they stay on, on, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is good. That's a good failsafe. Unless you go down the train and, and you just systematically release. Manually release, release. release yeah, all manually of them. Yeah, manually release every single brake pad. Yeah. Um, so, so this driver, like, given that brakes are, you'd, you'd, you'd potentially argue the most important kind of critical function, like critical system on a train. Um, the the driver uh, really should have waited for a fitter to come and kind of check the train over, but he wanted to get the train moving because because this thing had been sat there for half an hour. You know, Question. people were already leaving; they're getting yeah. pissed off. May not, and may not know the answer to this. Off, oh. Eh, putain, eh. <laughs> really my, my, my question angry. is like isolating isolating all of these brakes that's got to put a fucking light or something on up front right there yeah, has to hope. be you'd hope wouldn't you um uh however when song hopped back in the cab the uh, the air pressure dial for his braking system was showing normal oh. and uh, off he popped Happy days, thinking there's, everything there's was working like a, normally. There's not like a, a fucking brake isolation light or something. You'd think there would or... be a light. Did you? I, I, but there was no, be, no. Uh, in, apparently not. No. In, in apparently the, no light. In the United States, he would have had to have done a brake test before he set off. Ah. <laughs> I think also the rule book is quite explicit about what you have to do in the situation in the UK, in, in like GB as well. And I think you have to do a brake mm. test when this sort of that like you have ah, to do a brake test. These, we'll, uh, we'll also get to that, folks. Um, wow, these, uh, so yeah, these, um, these French careless, <laughs> careless. Well, they've got a bottle of wine in the front of the train. Yeah, haven't they? That yeah. sounds about right. Uh, yeah, yeah, they got a bottle Everyone of wine. Everyone should have a union in France. Yeah, they, they yeah got that's a, right. They got a carton um, of cigarettes. They got <laughs> they got a carton of holders for the cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> they got um, three yeah, of their whores. <laughs> yeah, this is it. So, the, so long, uh, kind of pulled away. Uh, without realizing that he had only one eighth of the braking power that he should have had, because only the front car of eight um, had any functioning brakes, uh, this is uh, this this may have ramifications for. And yes. if, if 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 at any point he had realized this and wanted to salvage the situation, all he would have had to have done is go to the back of the the front car or send Bovo to do it and hit the fucking lever that he had accidentally tripped. Correct. That would have made everything work again. He had an easier option, even. Oh no, I accidentally oh, hit the train man. crash switch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he was 30 minutes late at this point. He's down here. What's the easier option? Uh, well, there, are, there, there, there are other safety systems yes. that, that are here. That, that, that we'll get there. Okay. So the, the, the dispatcher said, all right, what you should do is skip the last stop. Uh, it's down here. Uh, Maison Alfort, Alfortville. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Um, sure. Ba- yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, so skip the skip the last stop, right? Don't just just ignore that. No one's gonna get on or off anyway, right? Mm. A lot of people left the train, but after this station, there was a steep grade down into the tunnel under Gare de Lyon, right? So he's yeah, gone. it's underground. You gotta go down yeah, for exactly. that. Exactly. So they well, keep the underground. The sources down, down I, is probably fine with the train with no brakes. Yeah. That's fine. The sources I looked at gave the grade as 4.3%. Which that's steep. That's very steep for a train. I can believe that though, because there are pit, bits of cross rail that reach that level of steepness. So I, I can I can believe that you can get yeah. down to a one in twenty one. And especially it's, for it's, like Paris, uh it's everything's built on top of everything else. Yeah, you might have to really take a dive train. down there. Yeah, it's like if you're if you've basically got what is a grade separated junction, then then you might get down to like one in twenty one for a for a, if all the trains are the same, they're always going to be applying power at that point. Then they, that's that, yeah, it's doable, doable. Well, I I I just know from like uh, when they built the Center City Tunnel in Philly, they were saying we're going to do a two percent grade, and um, a lot of the folks at the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad and later SEP that were like, that's impossible. You can't get a train up a two percent grade. <laughs> Defeatists. <laughs> the yeah, thing they, is, they the thing is, yeah. the Pennsylvania Railroad. They're like uh, a two percent grade. We got to build a horseshoe curve for this. This is true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just we just like building them. We got to do that. We got to go across like fifty miles and go around. Yes, I mean Licky Incline is like uh, like the the steepest mainline grade is is like yeah, that's like t- nearly three percent mm. as a grade. Huh? So yeah, you know, one in one in thirty eight. Yeah. So you know, uh, so uh, those guys, Scepter, you idiots. Yeah. 
Well, I, we also aren't allowed to procure good electric multiple units. So, you know, well, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> All of ours have to weigh seventy million tons. Oh, of course they yeah. have to. They have to be able to sustain an attack by uh, by all of the sci-fi baddies from the last hundred years of uh, sci-fi literature. Yes, that's right. Basically, yeah. um, so our 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 guy, Salo, this is Salo, Sola, 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 Sola. He starts. He starts applying. Dan, our man Dan. Yeah, our Dan. Dan. Yeah, Dan starts applying the brakes <laughs> for the descent. He gets almost no response after he rolls through the station he was supposed to stop at, uh-huh. which he probably could have stopped at. Um, right, he's got one eighth of the normal braking power. Uh, this was enough to start to slow the train, but not enough to slow it down in time. And this was a problem, right? But not a fatal one. Hmm. Because the Z5300 had two braking systems, right? Had your normal air brakes, then it had what we call in the United States uh, dynamic brakes, right? Uh, Or regenerative brakes. Yeah. Right? You know, you take the electric motor, you flip the... uh, you reverse the polarity you reverse of the neutron the polarity. Flow. I've yeah. always <laughs> wanted to reverse the polarity of something. Yes, and then you, you run it as a generator, and then the electricity goes up into the wires, or you put it in a radiator or something, right? Um, this is the, the regenerative braking is a technology which is brand new and innovative in Tesla automobiles and a century and a half old technology everywhere else. Um, <laughs> from, yeah, from yeah. the 1880s. Yes. Uh, for God's sake, it's not new. <laughs> yeah, so, so this, is, uh, this was an option he had, right? Uh, but the issue was Dan completely forgot about the dynamic brakes, uh, right? Oh. And the drivers on this route tra- tended to avoid using them because a lot of times they would cause the wheels to lock up and then develop flat spots. Wheel slide. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Horrid thing. But then, I guess, less hard than crashing the fucking train. Yes. Um, You'd think. So he made a... A guy guy who is so ruthlessly committed to avoiding wheel slip that he crashes the train. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you can't get wheel slip on a train if uh, none of the wheels are attached. Hey, the wheels on this came out fine, probably. Like, that's that's solid fucking metal. The wheels probably good. Just pick them right up, use them again. Yeah, Yeah, I I learned that from AVE. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Those wheels. Nothing happens to train wheels, ever. (laughs) <laughs> um so he makes a decision here he 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 radios in to the dispatcher at uh Gare de Lyon and he also triggers the general alarm oh, oh. shit not not the alarm general alarm general um <laughs> so, <laughs> so SNCF's general <laughs> alarm system was apparently very sophisticated right after after being alerted to a runaway, um, they could sound an alarm in the cabs of every train within six miles of the runaway, right? That froze all the switches in the area. It put all signals to red, which, you know, danger, stop, you know, mm. right? Um, and at this point, they had several options available to mitigate the damage that was about to occur. Yeah, right. in the big SNCF uh, control room, which yeah. we tried very hard to find pictures of. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you did. I thought that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> no, due to union regulations, there's no way it would be like three people. There's got to be yeah, like exactly, at least 30 right. people crammed into this cupboard. <laughs> so they, they, uh, they, they could try and reroute the train onto a through track, assuming RERA was operating at this time. They could reroute the train into an upper platform so <laughs> it wouldn't go still down can't a ramp. Figure out. Yeah. The guy still can't figure out how to stop it. And it's like, well, you're going to Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they could, worse come to worse, maybe they could even try and intentionally derail it at a safer location than the station, right? Into like hey, a they long could find some siding. Buffer stops. Yeah, yeah, they could yeah. find yeah. some buffer some- stops. They could take it out of the switch. Who knows, right? Yeah. Now, the problem was that after Dan had informed dispatch of his problem, he immediately left the cab to usher the passengers into the rear of the train. Which is <sighs> noble, 
But but you got a guy. You got a guy. You got yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, John yeah, Shaw. Yeah, 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 you got a guy, right? He's, that's There's literally that. his job. He's the guard. <laughs> fucking make him do it. Yeah. He also forgot to tell dispatch which train he was. Oh, <laughs> basic <laughs> radio procedure. The two things you say first: who am I talking to, and who am I? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this man, of course. He just no got one? on the radio and he was like, uh, hey, shit's real bad. Bye. Le, le, le train ne fonctionne pas. Yeah. Cool. And then just booked it, just left. Yeah. Parlez vous yes. inglaise. Hey. <laughs> so, so no one could figure out how to, you know, no one knew what the train was, no one oh knew where God. the train was coming from. So no one knew how to figure out how they could switch the tracks. Question. So it would do less damage. If it turns every signal to red when he does this, surely, if you look on the big board and you go, which train is still moving, right? Right. Yeah. So they do eventually figure it out. Um, like it's a fucking logic puzzle. That, that, <laughs> you gotta go I figured through. that shit out. It's not even my job. No one taught me how to do this, and it took me less time than us going through this slide. Well, I got like four minutes total to work this out, I think. I right? think I did this in under four minutes. Yeah. Someone go back and look in the, the YouTube timestamps. Yeah, to track. See, go to in there, do the See if I passed the test to become like an SNCF train <laughs> yeah, controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing is, apparently there was some kind of automatic system to route these trains into free platforms, which mm. was disabled by the general mm. alarm. Um, yeah, that can't happen. Other thing Actually, is, it's worth, so this is this is a uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Justin. Yeah, this is a thing. So we so we have this in the UK. You know, GSMR. There's the big red button that you can press, and it does the same thing. It, uh, I don't know to what extent it's, it freezes the operational system, but it does. You know, it free, it, it puts everything to red, and 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 drivers all stop. And um, but the 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 instructions about its use is um. Make a decision whether it's a good idea to do it or not. So I think we've we've talked about. I think in previous episodes I've talked about the sleeper train having its brake accidentally isolated and running through Edinburgh Waverley, and the driver of that train had the pr presence of mind to not push the red button because it allowed other trains to get out of the way. Mm. So yeah, um, slamming the red button isn't necessarily the best idea with with a runaway because it might mean that you're going to hit something. Anyway, I'm sure that won't happen in this situation though. Oh, so uh, no. yeah. Well, so the first thing that happened was uh, every radio frequency was immediately slammed with drivers asking, <laughs> why am I stopped? When am I going to get a green yeah. signal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why am I stopped either? What is going on? Just, I have just, to go home and see my mistress. <laughs> they don't, do they know and my it's wife? An, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you've gone, you've gone from your sanka set, and you're going back to your wife. And do they not tell? Is there nothing to like alert them to the fact that it is an emergency, and therefore you should? It, it is shut the fuck up Friday. Oh, oh no, there's a big loud alarm in every cab, and then these why guys. Why would you? Because it, yeah, inter they it interrupted their cigarette on a holder break. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't break into a, a, a mayday call on anything else. Why would you do it here? What what? Yeah. Because you're yeah. SNCF in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I understand it's a very serious situation. However, have you considered I don't like sitting here looking at this red signal? Yes. <laughs> um, and it took the controllers to guard de Leon several minutes to determine what train is the runaway. Essentially, by process of elimination. Oh my god! Right. And they're all having to talk to everybody who's fucking calling <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the good thing is that there's no, you know, there's no other train in the way. Like they are still going to manage to. Re oh, oh yeah. So there's another train. Oh no. Oh. Uh, so this was uh, SNCF one five three nine five one. There's so many numbers on these trains. I mean, yeah, that doesn't feel like a helpful classification yeah. system. I, that's too many numbers. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, take an Amtrak train, it's got like three numbers at to in total. Yeah, throw, right? throw, throw that's, some... for, that's for different reasons, though, Justin. This, let's is, face this it. is true. Yeah, there's not that many of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw some letters in there, you know, makes yeah. it much more yeah. recognizable. But, uh, oh, so this one's going to grapefruit. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, this one's okay. going, this is the opposite service, right? They mm. were scheduled to depart at 7.04 p.m., uh, but the conductor didn't show up, right? <laughs> 
fuck's right, sake. Oh, yes. Excuse me, it's I, the guard here. I'm I am sort of I, I I think I might be turning into Emmanuel Macron here. Yeah. <laughs> Ruth, ruthless <laughs> slash and burn of the the sort of subsidized French institutions. Mm. Yeah, he he was having his uh, cigarette on a holder break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. It was scheduled to part at 7.04 p.m. The uh, the guard was late. It was parked adjacent to the staircase in <laughs> in the lower level platforms for the future RERD. So most of the passengers were in the first few cars, right? The Yikes. driver was Andre Tongi. Tan- Tongi. Okay, right. So Tongi had a red signal and he didn't know why. And the guard eventually showed up, and they were still confused. Why can't we leave now, right? Hmm. Yeah, it was about 7.07 p.m. when he got the news. Uh-oh. Uh, 153944 was a runaway, and they weren't able to reroute it, and it was going straight into his train. Oh, jeez. Get, getting on the phone. Hello? Uh, yes, uh, you're going to die in about three minutes' time. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it was about, uh, about 90 seconds, actually. Hello. Yeah, you got about uh, night. Well, you got about eighty-five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Did 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 uh, did Tongi attempt to like reverse the train or like get it? Well, no, because like, behind him was a wall. Gosh. Oh, that'll do Borrow it. Yeah. out. It's yeah. fine. Oh, that'll do it. So, I mean, really the thing is, track. the thing about this long this long train. This is just yeah. this is a four a four car unit, right? Uh, yeah, a four unit train. The thing about that is, it's still a very effective buffer stop. Yeah, uh, yeah, it'd yeah. rate reasonably. Uh, yeah, it'd probably get a two or a three on the uh, buffer stop ring. Uh, yeah, pull, yeah, pull yeah. Just it, it compresses very well. It goes across a long yeah. distance. It's yeah. Well, Tongi uh, immediately got on the intercom. And he said, "Get out of the train. There's a runaway coming." Uh, most passengers started to file out of the train immediately. Um, just <laughs> try and go upstairs. Yeah, think on. about the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. Uh, they had about ninety seconds, and boom! Oh, yeah. Uh, Tangi stayed in the cab until, well, he was immediately killed. Right? Oh fuck! Uh, yeah, one. Well, he was staying in there, sending the still on the uh, t- still, on the still on the, sending like, the evacuation message. Oh, yeah, well, give Europe. give this man a medal. Yes, yes. give him whatever the French, the, whatever the crazy French medal is. The, I guess- the, 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 what is it? It's like the they can't know, give you a quite a girl for this because it isn't a girl, but they could give you a a quite a uh, chemin de fer, I suppose. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's got there's got to be a gong for that. Yeah, that's what hero of the piece right there. Oof. In Britain, all they do is name a train after you, which feels like it's adding insult to injury. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, <laughs> runaway whacked into him at about forty four miles an hour. Doesn't sound like uh, a lot, but these things yeah. You, yeah, tr- you, you're the crumple zone, right? And yeah. try, try running at six miles an hour into a wall. That hurts. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um Oof. so the runaway telescoped into the stop train. Uh, you know, the stop train was of course confined by the underground infrastructure, so it didn't really mm-hmm. move. It was compressed by about a hundred feet. Oof. Yeah. This is why you should not do underground terminal platforms, folks. I know it might sound like an easy and good idea, but actually don't do well, it. Well, or at one... least have a run-on tunnel afterwards with a long mm. friction buffer stop. Well, this one was supposed to be extended into a tunnel at some point in the future. Oh, because the, uh, the, the D-line was going to come yeah, into and it, in, right? In fact, yeah. yeah, in fact, it is now a through station. Mm. Um, but at the you time, just catch it, was it in not. the sort of building process, yeah. Yeah. If- most people got out of the stop train, uh, and all the people who didn't get out of the stop train, except two of them, were killed. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. There's about fifty six people dead, sixty injured at the oh, end of this. Jesus. There were two people on the stop train who survived. <sighs> uh, and all Those the not good odds. All the yeah. injuries on this one were particularly bad. Yeah, I yeah. can kind of imagine. Not least because you just sort of turned this into a, a shitload of like razor sharp metal debris. Yes, I mean, there's lots of yeah. amputations trying to rescue people. Um, yeah, Gareth put this in here. Big yeah, mess. I put this in. Why did I make? Why did I give myself this slide to read? Out? <laughs> it's just horrible. Yeah. So yeah, it's like just a yeah, exactly. It's just a mess. Like the the rescue workers were. 
were there for 20 hours trying to save those who were injured and, and kind of attempting to retrieve the dead. Um, there's like a young, there's a quote from a young firefighter, which is particularly horrific, but I thought it just captures how absolutely horrible this crash was. Mm. Um, I tried to lift someone up by the shoulders. His torso came off in my arms. Jesus. Just lifted the guy right off his legs. Ooh. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Lots of very sharp stainless steel everywhere. Yes. I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming around on, on, on all metal car construction again. I'm thinking that maybe it's not so good now. Well, would you rather yeah. it have caught fire? Ah, no. I, yeah, well, that, those are the only two options, right? I can, I, can, yeah. I, can do, I can do stainless steel or I can do wood, right? Uh, you could do collision car- it, well, maybe some wood. carbon fiber and you get really bad splinters. Yeah. Ooh. Just do it. I mean, the only trouble with these, the, the, these are like, these are solid, but there mm. is absolutely no, from the trains of this vintage, there is absolutely no collision energy management. Yes. And 44 miles an hour is a lot to put a lot of stress to put even like modern safety you know modern design crashworthiness standards you you'd you know that's a lot of force to put through a, a train but a, a modern train would have coped better with this it would still would have been a mess and it, i don't think it would have stopped all of it would have, you'd have still had a lot of fatalities but collision energy management i.e like crumple zones and and kind of passing that energy through the train to kind of distribute the forces so it didn't all happen and didn't also, things like anti climbers to avoid telescoping. There are lots of things that modern trains have that these didn't that that would have alleviated it somewhat. But yeah, this is this is this sort is of this sort of the the uh, calculus of of crashworthiness, which incidentally I find is a tremendously British word. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, like I don't know, it, it leads you to some grim places. Like uh, you know, the the driver sort of is the crumple zone for this, and that's sort of inescapable. And it's, I mean, this has this. It's I, I, yeah, I don't know whether you're going to draw parallels to this one later justin but like this this has unbelievable parallels to to cannon street you know the 1991 mm. crash that happened uh uh in cannon street which is one of the terminal stations kind of just over the it's got the bridge over the thames it's got that slightly gross kind of uh modern building with uh anyway yeah, yeah so it, was, train, it was my dad's commute story. in fact and it happened the yeah, year really. i was born so it, you very nearly robbed the world of uh a third of world leisure problem yeah. yeah, crikey! I mean, yeah, it happened. Uh, it happened uh, a month, exactly a month before I was born. Mm. Uh, kind of street rail crash. We are, we are the same age. Alex. Yeah. I didn't realize this. Oh, mm. there we go. Mm. You've achieved so much more than I have. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I'm face. also, I'm also much less mature. Uh, ah, mm. swings and roundabouts. Um, so yeah, um, it just lots of yeah, just 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 really horrible, really really horrible, really horrible crash. Mm. Sick leather jacket on this firefighter, though. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that like that that guy is is tooled up pretty nicely. Is that with a like a a a, a like a legacy shiny brass helmet with a leather? I'm not sure if it's almost sure, like a yeah. tunic. Yeah, I, it's, I'm it's, I'm not sure if he's got the like if they're still using the brass helmets or if this is the like really early F1 gallows that they were like polishing uh, up, but um. No, it can't be a gallows because it doesn't have the surround. That yeah, no, it is. It is just a, a an old brass. Uh, Adrian helmet. Incredible. Either way, that is a nice. That, that's a nice fit. I will. I will take yeah, my hat off yeah, to that. That's a nice fit. I always like the galley helmets. Anyway, this is this has been firefighting helmet corner. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, here's the train. What that did the impact? You can Ooh, see actually just folded it over. Actually, so this is where actually we talk about collision less, energy management. Uh, a lot yeah. less damage. <laughs> yeah, so this is this is exactly what collision energy management's about, right? Yeah. So all because of the fact that the train telescoped through, which which happened at Clapham again, you know, at, at the same year in, in in the UK with the Mark One coaches, and um, we talked about it on the Great Heck episode, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so the uh, yeah the, the 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 front of the train here, as you say, is not damaged. It's, it's hardly damaged at all, and that's collision energy management would mean that both trains would distribute that that kind of energy management would crumple. The, they'd have the crumple zone. That would distribute, so it wouldn't just be the front of the train that distributes, but every single crumple zone through the whole train would distribute that that energy, and that would diminish the amount of force kind of going into the, particularly into the stationary train. So yeah, that's a, it's a good good image that explains how collision, collision energy management uh, didn't work here because all yeah. that energy went into the stationary train. Yeah, it's one of those things mm-hmm. of like people. It, it reminds me of people who like 
don't want to wear seatbelts because be, they think they'll be thrown clear of the crash. It's like, oh no, t- sort of, everyone who gets thrown clear dies. Never, yeah, no, it's sort of a misunderstanding of like what sort of energy is being transferred yeah, where exactly. and when that you think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it looks sure. pretty good, so it must be fine. And it's you like, gotta, well, not exactly. You, you gotta explain this to the uh, FRA though, um, because yeah. they they don't believe in collision collision energy management. <laughs> there's, 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 a, there's a video actually that I showed in some of my lecture slides that. That, that shows their bud cars because they the, the FRA or or actually might not be it might have been whatever the it might have been um, Arima or, or uh, not Arima whoever the the the, the, the North the, American the Pioneer sort of threes test- they whack into an F forty or something yeah exactly yeah. they and and they and they are testing collision energy management you know they've got mm. a load of kind of uh, targets on it to sort of see how much deflect the kind of de- deformation there is they are using those but that was kind of looking at retrofitting existing coaches with. Uh, uh, collision energy management, and, and I take it that didn't go anywhere. Well, well yeah, they, they spent me. all the money to run the tests, and then they never impl- implemented the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the the resulting uh, the results. It reminds me of like uh, same thing with cars is that like a lot of like sort of steel bodied like particularly what you might think of as a muscle car. You throw those into into a high energy crash. Though, it, like the car looks fine. It's just uh, everything inside it has been it, like minced by uh, like flying glass impaled on the steering column. Uh, everything yeah, like, the, the like arm, yeah, your your arm has been like uh, yeah, like like death proofed out. Like yeah, 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 like, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. Really good. yeah. What I'm always astonished by is that you know they they do all the they, we have to do all these special tests here in America because we can't just adopt the European standards because physics are different here. I guess <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that would European be like standards are they're they're, they're good. Yeah. Everyone in North America, look, it's fine. Use them. They're actually yeah. fine. They're good. <laughs> Kept yeah, they're, using they're meters, good. kilometers right. an hour. I think the theory is that our freight trains are different so that they will crush any puny European train. But like, well, that also might be true. the rolling stock we're using right now is so bad that any puny European train is much stronger than anything we got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's a bit like, that, that's a bit like saying like an American muscle car crashing into mm-hmm. a, like a 1998 Fiesta that's got yeah. a, a Euro NCAP rating of like three. <laughs> The the Fiesta's probably coming off better in that situation. Yes, then, yeah, it then looks yeah. completely trashed, but you can walk out. Looks trashed, but everyone yeah. gets out and goes, "Shit, that was bad." And there's just and there's just several arms uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. on the windscreen from the other yeah. occupants. There's a the there's a car. guy impaled on the steering column. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, well, this has been car cr- crash test corner. Yes, yeah. It's really into thinking about cars and talking about cars lately. Yes. Strange. Yeah. No, don't don't tell them about what we're doing in the warm up. They don't need to hear <laughs> no, about no, the, the yeah, mini remaster. It's fine. Talking yeah. too much about yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of speaking cars. of uh, speaking of low cars. No, I why Italian I regret Gareth? putting this picture in. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, why do they always burn smart cars? I love smart cars. It's convenient. We have a smart you can car. you can yeah. push them into the road and then you can make your <laughs> yeah. barricade out you, of them. Yeah, you can just lift them up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They so, are, yeah, it's true. In the aftermath, um, they decided to put the blame on the driver, pretty much entirely, right? Mm. Uh, he was convicted of involuntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to four years in prison, uh, but with all but six months of that sentence suspended, right? That uh, seems weirdly merciful for the French justice system. Well, uh, uh, the guard was also convicted, but has his whole sentence suspended. Um, huh. Right. Um, what's her I name? I can think of only one reason. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, Odile Mirual? Yeah, she was fined $180, or $180 in euros. <laughs> Fine, yeah. 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 That's... And it's one of those, uh, to be fair, she could not have known the consequences yes. of... of, of- so I think no. it's kind of fair enough. No, it's but not. It's not her job to predict the like outcome of all this fucking like Swiss cheese. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whereas it's like it's another situation. It's like why? For me, there's never, there's never really human human error exists and it's a thing. Yes. But you like you don't solve the issue. You don't f- finish the investigation by going ah that was the problem. Mm-hmm. Like what was why why was the driver feeling so pressured to get that train moving again? You know, like what that's the issue. Like why was that happening? Why was the why ergonomically? Why were the two levers so close to each other that they could 
you know, that they could, one could be forced while yeah. moving the other one. Well, we just, Why were we the just rules did. not clear about leaving the train to not move? And, mm. and yeah, you know, like yeah. there are lots of yeah. things, lots of systems that should have been in place to, before sure. the driver gets blamed for Sure. It. Well, and, we, and we just was... did probably the purest example of human error I think we've ever done on this podcast with the Alfaro. Yeah. And even that wasn't like, it wasn't just, oh, this guy decided it was fine. Um, he decided it was fine for a number of reasons, some of which were spurious and some of which were structural. Yeah, and he did live through the app. This, but, was, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was apparently the first time in the history of the French passenger rail system that a railway worker was sent to prison for his role in an accident. Really? In, yeah, Brit- yes. in Britain, we will send you to prison on the like drop of a hat on the railway, or at least we used to, certainly. Um, well, no, we go for corporate manslaughter so that no one actually gets blamed. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, and it's invariably it's network rail that's state owned. Like if it's a tra- track thing, it's network rail. It's state owned anyway, so mm. no one's paying. Fine, yeah. Uh, but um, that is quite something. Like the, for the fact they went, part of me thinks that they, yeah, it'd be interesting to unpick whether it was a political thing because I don't know. Like were they were they ramping up the RER at the time, or was there some tenuous I, kind of, I can stat- think like of worker one, relation thing? I can, I can think of one sort of piece of worker relations, which is related to the screenshot here, which oh, is yeah, I mean, uh, that. SNCF then and now. Very strong, very strong union, very militant union. A lot of, lot of communists, uh, although weirdly mostly Trotskyists. Uh, um, and and the, the SNCF unions, uh, they blamed like, okay, they're, they're trying to run these trains too close together, Sure. Um, specifically, the grade into that station was too steep. Sure. Um, they 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 said there was too much pressure to keep the timetables. Um, yeah. They they said Dan was scapegoated, and after the sure. sentence is handed down, they go on strike at on December fifteenth, nineteen ninety two. Nice. Um, yes. It was like a big twenty four hour shutdown of the entire uh, all the commuter trains in and out of Paris, uh, just to ruin everyone's day. We love um, to yeah. go on grave. We love to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burn all of the uh, early '90s non-existent smart cars. They yeah. were getting burned. It was all Citroen C. It was all Citroen C3s. They were all getting <laughs> yes. Uh, all, all the two CVs. Sorry, that were just a whole across the city. There were just two CVs being uh, folded up like uh, scrumpled up newspaper and mm. tossed at uh, uh, kind of the police. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I believe uh, Dan still served his sentence. So yeah, all oh, four boom. months of it. Yeah, yeah exactly. All all two <laughs> months of it. Oh, six days of it. Yeah, <laughs> like it, they took him to look at the prison. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, listen, so, so, yeah, listen, yeah. listen to unions. Yeah, yes, exactly. L- listen, yeah. listen, listen to unions. Uh, but also, perhaps, if you find yourself, you may find yourself in a suburban French train, and you may find yourself disabling every brake on that train sequentially. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, that, that was pretty egregious. I will say that. If you find yourself doing that, maybe you should ask yourself, is there something else I should be doing here? Also, uh, if, you want, if you want to get home, and the train blasts through your station, what you shouldn't do is ignore the, the sign that says you, you, you will get a, a small fine if you do this, and hit the emergency brake. Because, because you, you will get a small fine and possibly kill 50 people. Yeah, exactly. She didn't even get away without getting the fine. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, see, the thing, what I, what I think, the, the, the moral of this story is that skip, stop, service patterns kill. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the moral of this story. Because uh, it, it killed twice. Because the, the fact that there was already a skip, stop, in the timetable change mm. meant that our, our, our lassie going to get our kids pulled the emergency brake. And then the fact that they then decided to skip the next stop meant that they didn't get a free brake test to identify the problem where they could have like then just turned the power off yeah, and, and it would right. be fine. So that's yeah. a double whammy of skip stop service patterns killing people. Everyone just run full Metro every train, yeah. every stop. <laughs> patterns. Yeah, I was about to say, you want to you wanna express a stopping pattern? Build two more tracks, asshole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Frequency is freedom, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, we talk about we talk about grade separation at crossings. Why why can't we have separation of through trains uh, mm, away yeah. from platforms? You get a little extra safety bonus from that. You don't have to stand right next to a train that's going to blast right through and like yeah, hit exactly. with the big wall of the big wall of air pressure. So yeah, or make you squeeze yeah. your coffee over yourself. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, everyone can refer back to the uh, oh, it's not a bonus episode anymore. You unbonused it. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, people, can, all all listeners, everyone watching can uh, can can refer back to the previous episode where we where I was on and we talked about stations and and bypass tracks. So mm. uh, everyone should have their credits from that episode as well. This is true. <laughs> yeah. WTYP uh, University. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have a segment on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Promising image already. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Hello. Hey, WTYP gang and possible guest. Once again, yeah, a failure one. to anticipate oh, that no, the guest not, would be part of the WTYP gang. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I am Liam. That's right. This story comes courtesy of my grandfather, Peepaw Redacted. <laughs> do you want me to do the beeps? <laughs> <laughs> he told me this story at an IHOP after we saw the movie Midway a few years ago. Oh, I don't go to see that film. Somehow, I never noticed he was missing a few fingers on his hand. Mm-hmm. So, so Peepaw had a pretty normal childhood. <laughs> Right. <laughs> after going into a coma for a few months after a nasty bout with the flu, this is finished- shit you could do back in the day. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that's just happened. It was yeah. just normal shit. You just got pneumonia as a child, yeah. and you had fifty fifty chance of living. Yeah, just normal shit. Yeah, he finished eighth grade and decided school wasn't for him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, some failed artist decided to fuck things up in Europe. So oh, Pete, that guy, yeah. Peepaw enlisted in the Navy and began working on aircraft carriers as an aircraft repairman. How he managed to do that without a high school diploma and being underage, I have no idea. Uh, are, you familiar, are, you, are you familiar with military recruiters? <laughs> I, I mean, a 14-year-old back then looked like a 40-year-old now. Yeah, because of all the true. cigarettes and yes. the drinking. Yeah, the cigarettes, yeah. <laughs> It's, un- it's unclear whether or not Peepaw saw combat, but by early 1945, he was back on the West Coast while the ship he was stationed on was being refitted. While working on getting a bomb mounted onto a plane wing... Just reminded what- me of my favorite World War II US Navy aircraft carrier story, which is that what you could use the wing mounts for was to make ice cream. Ooh, you could just... Wait, what? You, you, you take some fucking uh, some milk or whatever up there, you, you fly it up to where it gets cold, you fucking do a little bit of aerobatics, whirl it around, uh, and w- when, it, when the plane lands again, you have a barrel full of ice cream. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's nice. <laughs> Genuine, genuinely a real thing, just as a treat that you could do. It's like uh, doing a railroad breakfast on the... Uh, on the shovel, yeah. On the shovel, yeah. <laughs> mm. Nice. I like that. While working on getting a bomb mounted onto a plane wing, one of the mounts snapped and dropped a 500-pound bomb onto the deck. (laughs) My grandfather, thinking quickly, tried to catch it. (laughs) (laughs) Thankfully for him, and for me, the bomb didn't go off, and instead, uh, the fin of the bomb crushed and sliced a few fingers off of his hand. Because it was a 500 pound bomb that he tried to one hand catch. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. 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 He says it was so cold and wet at the time he didn't notice till he went to reach for a tool and realized he was a few fingers short. (laughs) He was sent to the local hospital, missed redeploying with the ship he was stationed on a few days later, and again missed redeploying with it when he returned a few months later due to complications from the injury. That ship was the USS Indianapolis, which Ooh. went on to sink horrifically about two weeks later. Whoops. Yeah. What's an aircraft mechanic doing on the Indianapolis? Uh, good question. I well, don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe he had some inaccuracies in his recollection. Yeah, well, sorry. Well, he actually. No, I mean, they had they carried float planes. I take it back. It's perfectly oh, plausible. Yeah, it's some yeah, yeah. I f- bombers. Uh, mm, well, I mean, the mostly recon. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He actually left that last detail out, and I only just found out about it a few months ago while reading a genealogy book a third or fourth cousin had put together. Hmm. Uh, instead of dying from uh, whoopsie explosives or shark attack, he buried my grandmother 
got a BA in philosophy and supported 10 kids on his salary alone because the (laughs) 1950s and 70s, 1950s through 70s were an absurd time. Incredible. <laughs> we we got to do the Indianapolis at some point because I can yeah. talk about the the saddest possible story about command responsibility, uh, one that still sticks in my head to this day. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, apologies in advance if these details aren't very precise. He's in his nineties and his mental facilities aren't always the clearest. I continue his legacy of surviving public service through sheer dumb luck, where I've somehow managed to dodge a tornado and not be drowned in a thousand year flood while at work. Oh. Thanks for the show. Don't tell that to your in- medical insurance. <laughs> yeah, that that's, right. Down. that's right. That's right. Ah, we gotta we gotta go back to uh, for, like your degree costing fifty dollars and your salary being able to support a family of ten. Yeah, when a house costs as much as the bricks that built it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. return. <laughs> <laughs> if you do some some absurd feats of salary negotiation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, okay, here's a story about my grandfather. Mm. Uh, he was applying for professorships. Um, I, I, I forget the precise circumstances, but anyway, he had a really good offer at uh, University of North Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he, he still had to go in for like an interview or, or, or he had some kind of counter offer at Washington Lee University. Um, and so... I don't think they have a shinty team. Yeah. <laughs> what he what he wound up uh doing was, you know, he he wanted to work at UNC. And so he just told WNL like uh he he told them the salary offer at uh UNC and he said, "Well, double it." <laughs> Ooh. And they did. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> always, always ask that sort of question. That's the moral of that story. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, a refuge in audacity, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah is, don't ask, don't get. Yeah, yeah. Don't, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So uh, all of you, all of you, double your Patreon subscriptions. Exactly. Right now, do it. I told you to. <laughs> um, yeah. I, at moral of the story is be a professor in like the 60s 70s 80s yeah yeah yeah, 100 percent. best time to work in that sector or indeed most sectors this is true it's all Uh, been downhill monetarily from there yes well that was safety third shake hands with danger Danger. our next episode is on the boston molasses disasters does anybody have commercials before we go it's all gareth Oh, I, I, yeah, no, I have been Liam Anderson. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'll get one more actionable threat in. Um, oh, uh, who, who do I want to be angry about? Oh, <laughs> oh I know who. Uh, Pretty Patel. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how, you, no, you're definitely going to have to bleep this. No matter how you. <laughs> and no one ever talks about you ever again. It's a long ass <laughs> beep. Yes. Keep that button down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no, I'm, yeah, Rail Natter of Wednesday nights. Um, uh, I shout on Twitter. And um, it's an absolute pleasure to be uh, depping for, uh, or being Liam. Uh, yeah. no, I love you guys. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, hello, hello, listeners. Thanks for keeping supporting the show. Absolutely. Well, bye, everyone. All right. Off feet of Zen. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Adieu. Et dieu.